Thank you, um, and thank you all for being here. It's good to see you again. I, I wanna focus today a little bit um, about the recruiting and the recruiting goals and really what I'm seeing in, in my district and I'm hearing from my district. As you know, General Brown, I think it was last year, you and I had a conversation about we're not meeting our recruiting goals and some of our positions didn't get filled. So I took that to heart and I went back and did a little research and, and start, started talking to some of the people in my, in my district. How far are we off on, on the Air Force recruiting goal? How far, was it still around 15,000? Oh, no, on, for the, uh, it's about 10%, so for on the active side, it's about uh, 2,500 or so, a little higher on the, on the Garden Reserve. I, I would say part of the challenge with the Garden Reserve is because it, our attention is really good on the active side right now, about 90% plus or minus uh, uh, on officer and enlisted, which means you don't have airmen leaving the active force going into the Garden Reserve. And, and so from, uh, we've made some, uh, some changes in, in uh, reducing the barrier to entry but not impacting the standards. And part of the other aspect is just the familiarity with the uh, with military service. And, and can you share and talk a little bit about what steps that you all are using to boost the recruiting efforts? Sure. Uh, the first thing I would highlight is I, I often say that young people only aspire to be what they see. And if they never see our United States Air Force, they don't are not inclined to grow up to join the United States Air Force. And so part of that is, is how do we better engage in our communities? Uh, I gave a letter to our, all of our wing commanders uh, about two months ago to, to tell them to get in the communities and open up their bases and be, get re-engaged. I would say the same thing with our recruiters, to get them back into the high schools now that uh, uh, we've gotten past COVID. And this is where, uh, for members, as you go back to your community, uh, in some cases, encouraging them to open up the high schools. Uh, we, we do have good opportunities in some places. Some places it's a little bit more challenging. Uh, but I, I think we're making progress based on some changes we've made and we're seeing uh, some of that uh, happen uh, throughout the course so of the past seeing, several months. you're seeing numbers go up? Uh, we are. We, we did some things to, you know, change uh, some policies that were a bit more restrictive than the other services, and uh, that's helped us to increase our numbers. And Because uh, originally we were about 15 percent, and we're down, we're going to be probably less than 10 percent by we get to the time we get to the end of the uh, fiscal year. Okay. As I, as I talk to the people in my district, as I talk to the people in the community, um, and as I've done some research, in fact, Heritage Foundation um, did a, a study, and nearly 70% of the active um, service, active duty service members have witnessed really a politi politi politicization of the military. And I, whether we think it's a problem, we feel that it's a problem, it, the study and the data that Heritage did, and I can, I can give that to you, shows that the military being political is just, it's not, it's not positive. Um, and it hurts, it hurts morale, it hurts pride. And I talk to, to men and women and families and in, in my district, and they feel that they lost a sense of pride. They feel like the woke agenda isn't helping. We talk, we talk too much about diversity, equity, and inclusion when, when I'm all for diversity, equity, and inclusion, but I think the most diverse and equity and inclusive that we can be is for the individual. And from what I've heard and what I've seen is we've gone from the individual to a small percentage of folks that we focus on. Um, and, and I have in front of me you know, the slides on the diversity training and the equity and the inclusion training. How much money and time do we really spend on that? Can we get a better sense to help educate everyone? I can provide you, you know, exact information for the record, but I will tell you, our, most of our training, and most of our focus is on the readiness of the force. And part of that readiness of the force is to ensure that they were building cohesive teams, and part of those cohesive teams is to get to know our airmen to left so, and our right. And I appreciate that. And one of the things it talks about not ta in one of your slides is not to not to recognize people as moms and dads. I mean, as a mother, I take a little bit of offense to that. It also talks about not using the word terrorist. Can you explain why we wouldn't use the word terrorist and mom and dad? I, I think you gotta get that message out because I think a lot of people are really frustrated and, and they feel like we're polarizing as opposed to coming together. What I would tell you is that uh, what I perceive is if we're misreading some of the aspects of the things we're trying to do as we move the Air Force forward, and then we look at how we build cohesive teams. 
And so part of the building the cohesive teams is getting to know uh, our airmen. And Gentlemen's time's expired. Our general ladies' time Thank has expired. 